what's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where last time we had to scrap all of our plans because of some stupid trains because i wanted to originally work on the aluminium plant and right at the end i give you a quick glimpse of what i kind of built here because obviously we built it in the past so we kind of skipped it but today we're going to move on to the next part of the project which is convert this little gap we have here which i put down on a little underflooring kind of style just to give it a bit of how would you say battlefield will say levolution and what i want to do is i kind of want to make just a something a little bit different like we can see the obviously the pipes under here but obviously we're going to fill this in as well with you know foundations so there's going to be no holes here but with all this up here i want to bring the refineries down here which are going to make the heavy oil residue which are going to make the plastic and then also going to make the uh, uh petroleum cork because all these 12 refineries here, which are in segments of three, are here to make aluminium scrap, which needs alumina solution at 240 because we've overclocked it to 133.3333% to make 400 per minute. And this is also going to output 140 water as a byproduct. And this recipe can be a bit of pain for people and i do get a lot of questions like what do we want to do with this water do we want to send it to make some concrete do we want to send it to some pure recipes do we want to bottle it and sink it well we're not going to bottle it if that's what you think we're actually going to send that water and we're going to send it upstairs to copper but we're going to do that in the next episode so keep that in mind for next time but what i want to do now is because this is going to need petroleum cork precisely 80 per minute and if we go into the calculator and do 80 times 12 is going to be 960 petroleum cork and if i quickly whip out a refinery here put that down head down here go to the petroleum cork recipe we're going to need uh how much how much was it 960 yeah so if we are going to here 120 per minute and then we do 960 then it'll be divided by 120 wasn't it will be eight why did i do eight yeah yeah so we're gonna need eight it is 120 isn't it yeah 120 petroleum cork but we're going to make a little bit more than that because obviously we need to compensate for the heavy oil residue that we're going to be making um, to make sure that we make enough plastic as well. So we need, in total, uh, so if we need 12 heavy oil residues, we're going to make the maximum heavy oil residue from a 600 line, which means if we go to heavy oil residue, we're going to need quite a bit so i'm only going to use a 300 line so we're going to use 10 10 crude oil uh yeah 10 10 10 which is going to make how much per minute 400 heavy oil residue right i've totally confused myself with all this now all i know is i'm going to put down five refineries here five refineries there fill them bad boys up then ship the resin out of here down a little manifold line here which is then going to go doop, turn into a refinery here get churned and made into plastic come down here go this way get put into a storage and then any excess is gonna get sunk right hopefully my little demonstration there helped and then we're gonna get that on that side onto that side and then the heavy oil residue is gonna come along here and then go into the refineries down here to make petroleum cork then the petroleum cork is gonna go on a manifold line with more than like wait these might be a little too close i think i've done these too close because if i was to go convey a lift conveyor lift yeah yeah because if that's where it's going to go down there that means a splitter is going to need to go here and we can already see the problem that yeah wait a minute <laughs> let's try this let's try this for the memes let's just let's just get a lift you know plug it, plug it. stop attaching to, no attach to this there <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not going to fit so what i need to do is I need to delete all of these and then reposition them this way. Okay, so I think that might do it. So I've just pushed all of these a little shift to the right. And then I'm just going to kind of measure this now. And I guarantee you, you watch, it's not going to fit. Uh, actually, hold on a minute. So if that goes there, right, we could do stubby lifts. We could do stubby lifts, right? If I get a you into... Wait, I think I might need to push it one more back. Oh! that works that works uh it is linked because i heard the beep i don't know if you heard the beep listen beep beep so it is locked so i could technically put them there but i'm not so i need to push these by one more again which i'm guessing 
I need to push it to that line right there by one more. And if I was to do that, it will take it to that position, which then allow me to do a better stubby lift, right? Because I can put that there. There we go. And we can just do it like that, right? But then what we need to think about as well is, is that going to work? I just can't measure today. Because if I'm going to put that there, we're going to need a second line to come down here, which I might have to squeeze. I'm just going to have to shift this further back, you know? I'm just a spoon. So I'm just going to shift this further back. And maybe I'll just put it... No, not there. Oh my God, I can't even put down a bloody refinery. There. Wait, no, that was the same position I just put it in. Further back. There. That should do it. Line it up with them lines. Fill all of them in. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Right, that looks a lot, lot better. So I can now put these, say for example, here. This is all this episode is going to be, by the way. It's just going to be me putting splitters here, I guess. I'm putting down these refineries because I didn't pre-plan this. I promise. So if I, that was to go there, and obviously you're going to go up one, you're then going to get split. You can then get a lift from there to there to make sure you're stubby and then a lift's going to come up and then we're going to have a lift coming up here which is going to be for the extra because yeah that should work so i'm just going to leave that and we're going to focus on this area and first priority that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a walkway coming down here so as you can see i've kind of got these little pathways here for my little butt to run along but we need a way down here so i think we're going to remove this little corner like i saw put that foundation back and then get some walkways so where's my walkways and then we're going to bring you i think to the even though it's coming in like that a little bit i think i'm just going to do it like that and then let's get the yeah let's bring this foundation out here by one like so because i'm going to have to remove this flooring above because i'm going to put a four meter foundation here in a minute which it will clip into this set of foundations here otherwise if i did it the opposite way it will make everything off by one meter which could be a problem in the later when we when we do some builds so now that we've got that let's get this change it to a four meter foundation zoop that all the way along there it then makes a solid wall hiding the pipes and everything but we could make a door that goes underneath so now we have this and i technically could bring this this way right like that yeah we could do that do that walk way down bada bing bada bosh I've already said that once already. I apologize. Um, then we're going to work on the next walkway. So if we was to quickly get a beam real quick, we're going to make sure that this is a wall. And we're going to do the same here as well. So we're going to push that by one there. Bring that to there. Oh, I spoon bits. You got rid of it too early. Because that goes there. And then that clips through there. So then these go to the edge of every foundation. And we zoop along. So then we've got this. But... The question is, is do we want to do a wall here to segregate this or have these here? I'm thinking a wall and we can create these as corridors and stuff like that. So where do we want the main door to be to get into this? I don't think we can kind of really look at that just yet because we don't know where the refineries are going. And I'm going to have to remove these real quick because if I was to get a refinery and put it down here, it's going to raise up by one. Is that fine there? We could go with that. Because it's only bringing oil up, right? Then if we put down a floor hole here, that's just going to go straight into there. So we could could do that. So if we get five refineries, hello, copy, uh, two, three, four, five. And then we use this for mergers and the outputs of the pipes, which then means this foundation I'm putting down now is going to be a pioneer walkway. And then we put another foundation here, which is going to be for pipes and mergers. And then this is going to be for refineries. So then we've just found out where our doorway is going to be as well. So if we do that, so this is where our refineries are going to go onto. And that means this right here is going to be our doorway right there, which then comes onto that hallway. And then we can get a hallway going down there in case we build anything over there later on. So let's just put down this bit of foundation here, like so, and here as well. And then we're going to go... That's the walkway. This is the output. So that means we're going to bring you to there. Right? Is that too far? Yeah, it is. Because that... You see how these are on this line here? This one's just over. And there we go. That's them five down. Which now means we need to put down our... Like, pathway or walkway borders. Um, so let's just kind of do what I normally do. Get our beams down here like this. To segregate the, the areas off. And then for the door, 
Um, we're going to bring that in here. And we're going to do our normal door that we normally do. Um, which we're going to grab our rod barrier. Place you there. And then... Uh, place you there. Grab ourselves a door. Hold control, replace that one. Hold control, replace that one. And then we got our door. Oh, if it works. There we go. And now we can come out of here. And then we can just bring this along here. Connect that up to there. Do some form of structure around this. So we need to take this all the way along here, actually, don't we? Like that. But I'm thinking about doing something else different with these walls. So, because if we look around here, it would be nice if we can. Where's the edge of the, f the wall? It's right there. If we go get ourselves a hex frame and then zoop that along here, and we can kind of create our own wall instead of using the default ones that we have. And then we have this, like so. And then we can grab ourselves a beam and maybe double it like that. So it looks like a thick boy, maybe. And then we can already see that it's getting darker as well. So we're going to need to put some lights in here. So if I turn off my light, we can already see that this is getting way, way darker than anticipated. So, 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 we are going to grab ourselves a beam, place that here, and then I'm going to rotate it by three notches. So middle mouse wheel, one, two, three, place that there. And we're going to do that all the way along here. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're going to go into our signs uh, organization. And do I do these signs or do I do the longer ones? Let's do these for now. And we're going to do it on every middle one of these, every two. So one, two, then this one, one, two, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to paint the beams black just so it hides that orange. Unless that, that orange actually doesn't look too bad. I kind of want it to bring out the lights, right? Then we go into here, change the layout to uh, just a shenanigans, remove the text, go to select your colors, put your own personal color in there. I've got my own accent here. Select that, brightness three, copy that, and just paste that all the way along these signs if I get them right, like so. And then we have some accent lights. It is kind of coming morning. Is my time paused, by the way? It is, 8.05. This mod, by the, uh, by the way, Sky UI. I see a lot of people still commenting, even though I've showed it multiple times because you're a bunch of spoons. It's called a mod called Sky UI, and it allows you to change the time of day, pause it. And obviously, I use this, so then, you know, every time I do skips and move to time, you're not going to change time of day, so it's not going to go nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime, and stuff. Uh, but you can also do some other cool things with it as well, like you can make it rain and stuff. But obviously, rain has been disabled with an update 8. Um, because Unreal Engine 5 does not support what the devs have done with the rain or something. You have to ask Sinon about that, but he mentioned it in the Twitch chat. So now that we've done that, what we want to look at is we know that the mergers from these are going to be outputting uh, resin. So if we set this to the heavy oil residue, we know it's going to make resin. So um, we are going to overclock these because we are going to bring in one line of 600 oil. So we're going to put these to 200 and we can see we're going to need 60 crude oil in here and it's going to output 40 resin. So 40, 80, 120, 160, 200 resin. So 200 resin to go and make residual plastic is going to be uh, three machines, 60, 120, 180. And then one of them machines is going to be overclocked by an additional like 33%. Um, so, or we could just put, yeah, we can just do that. So I'm going to put these like next to these, but I'm going to flip them. So I'm going to do one, two, three, like that. And we still have enough here just to place a merger right there. But just so you guys are aware, I'm going to paint these first five purple. So that's heavy oil residue, heavy oil residue. Then I'm going to paint these blue so you know that these are plastic. And then we need to do this on this side as well. So we're going to flip that. One, two, we need to extend this a little bit first before we place the others down. And three, and then same again. One, two, three. I don't like painting them when they're still glowing because if you do that with the signs as well, the lights don't transfer over. So if you put down a sign and it's still being built and you do the, the paste function on the lights, uh, it just goes to black and you have to delete the sign to rebuild the sign and stuff before the light actually works. Right, so now that we've got that, so we have five residue down there. We have 200 plastic coming this way, 200 plastic coming that way. That going to, into here. This is going to be making residual plastic. We're just going to copy that recipe, paste it in there, paste it in there. But then we need to change this to so it's taking 80 polymer resin. So we're going to put that in there. And we're just going to just change this. 
because until that says 80. So we're just going to do that. And I'm going to guess it's going to be 134. No, it's going to be 133.33333333, isn't it? Whoa, 133.3333. There we go. It is going to make an odd number, but it's fine because this is not going to be like a, a full focus plastic factory, you know? We're going to round this number to whatever it's going to produce later and then overflow is going to get sent to a sink anyway. The water, we don't need to worry about because I always send 300 water down a pipe to where it needs to go. Um, or a 600, depending on the pipe you want to use. So let's start putting the merges down on each of these outputs. And then we're going to get a Mark III belt along the manifold line. And then we're going to get splitters. Oh, I missed one. Yeah, bloody idiot. Yes, I call myself an idiot. Somebody clip it. Jesus. Uh, three. And then we're going to send in 60 out per each one. So mark one, mark one, mark one, mark one, mark one. It is 60 per each one, isn't it? Wait, what was it? 40. 40 per each one. And then over here, we're just going to grab ourselves a sublitter. Not a smart splitter. And then we're just going to go into you, into you, and into you. And I've got an auto save. And then obviously put the belts back down onto the manifold line with what we need. Obviously, this one's going to take a little bit more, isn't it? That's going to take 60. That's going to take 60. And then this one is also going to take... This one's going to take 80 now. So we're going to make sure a Mark II line goes down here. I always put the correct about it, uh, the correct volume of belts to go into where it needs to. It just helps manifold lines. And then just extend this across a little bit more. Same with this side. And then what we need to look at is the overflow. So... I'm more than likely, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get myself a storage here, which is just going to be for this plastic. I'm going to place you there and the same on, um, actually, what would be better here? Because I could merge these together. Be, the best thing to do would be to merge them together. So let's get a merger from over here. Slide these into the back end of this. The machines, you dirty minded bastards. Um, one, two, three. Put that into that way. Um, there and there. You're going to be outputting 26.6 plastic, so we're going to be needing a Mark II along here with Mark ones coming out. And then we're going to shift this along here, like so. And then I'm going to get a elevator hole here, and we're going to bring that another one to there. We're going to remove this. We're going to get ourselves a merger placed here to face that way, which is also going to line up with... No, it needs to merge over here because this is the output. So this will be the merger here, and that needs to go to the... Or, 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 we could technically shift that to the... Like that. Because if it's coming down this way, the outputs of the plastic, like this, with a Mark II going down the central manifold line, we can then bring this line from here to down here, like so. Grab ourselves a Mark II lift because we're still using Mark II stuff. Place you there. Get a Mark II, place you there. Make sure that's an input side. And then underneath, we'll just do the same. We'll just do that. Send you that way. You that way. Grab myself a Mark II belt. Connect you to you. I'll sort that under four and out soon. TM. But that is that done. Right? So that's then merged. But then what I want to do as well is I want to make sure these go into a storage. So I'm probably going to extend this out here like so. And then we're going to get ourselves our industrial storage. Nope. It needs to go one further back. Nope. It needs to go one further back. <laughs> it needs to go there. And we need to get a smart splitter. I'm going to place that there. Make sure the left hand side, because obviously the input's coming from this side. So left hand side is going to be plastic forward it's going to be overflow and then we're going to put down a resource sink right here like so i'm going to get a mark two so if you're going to be mark two this means this is going to need to be a we're going to put a mark four down here because obviously we're going to be moving four and it won't be 400 plastic will it that's 400 resin i'm thinking about we're going to be shifting 20 mark three will do mark three mark three mark three mark three into there and then that should be the plastic done and then if we bring this along here, like so, take the foundation this way, that's then going to be our next and uh, our, our other entrance, which means we can take this back here so we can at least walk back to this resource sink, get our painted beams, place them back there, mark off where our walkways are going to be, like so, make this the doorway again. So, of course, cover ourselves the road barrier, place that there. 
place you there. Grab ourselves a door. Place. Place. And then that's that. Now we can exit to this entrance. And we don't know what's going here yet. Actually, no. This thing is going to be the, the train station for the copper. It's going to go up there. So now that we've got that, we need to extend this walkway down here because we need to bring in the refineries now that are going to do the petroleum coke. And bada bing, bada bosh, I've done them. So as you can see, I've now brought in these uh, pipes as well. I've decided to move and shift everything over to the central bits here and took the pipes above them. So this is going to be carrying the heavy oil residue, which is then going to push its way down this way and then do a right, which then comes into the input of these refineries which are all going to be making petroleum cork which all merge together here so we can see this is making 240 per minute because we've overclocked it to 200 percent as well and then we've done the same with this one so this is 240 that's 480 in total 480 there and we're mainly going to be focusing on this side to transport and this side's going to be getting sunk or we could send it to make additional power if need be um so i've kind of done that i painted these black just so you kind of know that they are petroleum cork uh and yeah i've kind of shifted a few things here and just kind of removed what we had here a minute ago and just kind of seen where it's going to go and we're going to kind of take it with a flow as well so now that we've done that what i want to be doing is i've added a little bit of a, a ramp here so we can go upstairs uh, at least because obviously this walkway is still here oh and i've added a lip down here as well just kind of break that flat wall up there with this foundation so now we've got a bit of a bit of like a little edge but these obviously my box site and i've got these two here so i need to reposition the refineries again because i'm kind of like trying to make sure that we can kind of squeeze everything in and make sure it's nice and compact and neat and tidy and clean really okay so for the pipe situation i've done the pipes underneath which is just obviously mark ones uh, and then we've also done it on this side as well which i've got coming down well coming up from a pipe that's all the way down here that goes all the way down this kind of stack with a mark ii pump in the middle mark ii pump at the bottom like i said i always recommend putting a mark ii pump at the horizontal part before going onto the vertical um as you know with our fuel plant uh, explanation and that goes all the way down here over to this area where i've connected this up to this oil extractor where obviously this is a mark ii i said mark ii but it's a pure note so we're making 600 just overclocked it as you know uh and that's given us 600 crude oil per minute and then all the petroleum cork has now been inserted or getting inserted into the refineries here which are still in the same quadrants of three with the pipes of aluminous solution coming from the refineries that are making the, you know, uh, well, taking in the bauxite. Uh, made, the, made sure the pipes are white so you guys can understand what's in the pipes as well and just for easier of use for me. Um, so this is now going to be making the aluminium scrap, which is going to obviously create quite a lot of water. And if we go to the calculator, we're actually going to be making, uh, wait, 140 times by 12 we're gonna be making 1680 water here i've come up with some crazy ideas of what i want to do with this but my final result is that we're going to get the water from this because aluminium plants do need copper and within this copper plant i well, copper plant the aluminium plant i do want to be making some more advanced things with copper so we are going to be looking at like um we're going to be, well, we're going to do some circuit boards. We're going to get some computers up in here um, and some stuff with alternate recipes regarding aluminium. But also aluminium, to make the copper sheets, we actually need copper, as you know. So if we go to assemblers uh, and go to aluminium alclad sheets, we can see that we're going to need copper ingots anyway. It's only a small amount for the, uh, the amount of water we're going to be using, but we're going to be using the pure copper recipe to make excess and a lot more copper than we're going to need but it's there for the future so when you know we need it we will utilize it which at some point i will do so we're going to need it for the alkaline sheets we're going to need it for the casings so we're going to send that water to probably another layer up there which is going to be for full of copper refineries and that copper train that we set up a while back more precisely this one here that's just off the highway which is currently bringing in five lines of copper and 
obviously we're going to upgrade these lines to make sure that they're bringing in as much copper as we can because when we built this last time was only we only had mark four belts as a max uh, max load and then we're going to ship that copper from here over there in a little distance to our aluminium plant but we're going to do that in the next episode because I want to make sure that these builds that we're doing, these projects we're doing, are broken down into smaller chunks just so it's easier to follow along and easier to understand and stuff. So check out my other content right here. I will see you in another satisfactory video pretty soon. So keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.